Hi everyone, it's another Grasshopper tutorial at the University of Queensland School of Architecture. Christina here, and today we will try to see how do attractors work, and we'll start with attractor point. So to see it and understand it, we'll use grid. So let's go to vector grid and take a square grid. Let's give it some. Here it is. I don't like this one. I want it of specific size. So let's define cell size and the number of cells in both directions. I will use one slider for both. You can you can take two sliders and change the number of cells in two directions independently. It's up to you. I like it this way more. Then I want to see how many points did this operation give me. Points meaning on the conversions of the outlines of cells of the grid. So I will need point list to see it. Points here. Numbers are too small. I don't see them. Now I do. Yeah, okay. 21, because we start from zero row of data, which will not give me exactly what I want. Therefore, I will have to flatten this parameter. And now we have each point numbered independently, which is exactly what I want. Next component I will need is to launch a point which will be an attractor to our elements we'll specify later. So I'm dropping a point here and maybe here. Such one point. Here it is. Now what I want to do, I want to measure the distance between this point and each point numbered. So I need a distance, therefore we are typing distance and here it is, distance from, from what, from points extracted from here to this point, perfect, now we have a distance. To see how exactly it works I will take a line and connect each point of the grid with the new point. Here is how it goes. Just to visualize it to understand how it is. We can also actually look at it in this way. And we have a number of lines. Great. Pretty much what I need. We have lines and we have how many? 440 lines distances of this dimension between each point. 440 points, 441, and this point we introduced. Perfect. I don't really need it. That's just to visually understand it. Next step will be to put circles, could be anything, again it can be it's not these circles, I wanted to have these circles, yeah. Next step is to put circle on each point, I think I will put this one a little bit lower and this one as well. This will go here. Okay. So plane is each point for the circle. Something happened. Here are circles. Now they are of the same size. Let's hide what we don't need now as well. Okay. Now we populated our grid with circles, but they are all the same. And I want them to have their radius dependent on the distance to this point. We have distance here and we are going to use it to define to define the radius. 
let's try to connect it nah too large you see something happened but these are too large when something is too large we can introduce a math component and divide it so by dividing the number we're making it smaller and we'll be able to use it so we'll have this and um, here you'll have to experiment and see which number works for you I will try well because I kind of have the idea of it 25 and divide this distance um, number on 25 and introduce it as radius ah that works pretty well for me let's see what happened yep maybe even too large I don't like that here they are too the circles are intersecting so I will make it a little bit smaller yeah and voila we can move the point around and it will define the radius of our circles let's see another example pretty close but kind of um, reverse I will just take all this and copy it here and hide this okay we have our grid we have number of points maybe this slider is not here I will not need the line okay process starts pretty much the same we measure distance between each point on the intersection of grid cells outlines and the point we introduced which is here our next step will be to remap the numbers of this distance taken as the value and the source we didn't introduce it yet we will need bounds components to introduce a source so bounds come on okay here it is so what we'll do is we'll um, have a domain of numbers like limits of the numbers from lowest one smallest distance between this point for example and this point and the largest which will be the first point to this point numbers domain and here we go after the numbers are remapped we will feed them to graph mapper to make it more interesting I will go with um, probably with parabolic one mapped and with this tool I will actually define the distance to my point so um, circle again plane is points Radius is here. Something doesn't work. Let's see. What number did we get from here? Okay, as you can see, numbers are too small to be perceived. And we have this small circles here, which is not true. It is fine. Therefore, we'll drop it for a while. And instead of dividing numbers as we did last time, we will multiply them. So again, math, multiplication. Here we go. A comes from here, or B, or basically whatever you like. And I will multiply it on, I don't know, let's say 2 point something. I don't want them to be dramatically larger, I just want them to be larger enough to be seen. Okay, here we go. Stop. 
I would say that's enough. Three, actually. So now we control the proximity to the point and the dependent on it radius of our circles. They don't have to be circles, you can make it anything you like. You can control the radius of your circles with the graph mapper, that's why it's here. You can make this difference between them more subtle, less, more, anything you like. Um, you can introduce this domain that's created in bounds here just with a panel if you know the numbers if you have the idea of them you don't have to construct bounds if you have some specified and predefined dimensions of the proximity to the point from the point of the grid you can just construct it manually and say 5 to 85 could be so you could change this to this and see how it didn't really go well. Distance, yeah, that's right. Should be working. Six, six to ninety. Like that. Sorry, six to ninety. It has to be multi line. And here we go, and here we go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just realized what I'm doing wrong. <sighs> of course. So either with the bounds or with the panel result is pretty much, I'm not saying the same. Here, if we put a larger number, we will have these points starting further. So let's see what happens if we introduce 100. See, they kind of fade away from us. If we introduce 100 and let's say 50, we will hardly see them here, so it's all up to you which approach do you use. I think this one is more reasonable. And then again, graph mapper, you can play with it, you can see how it affects our circles. And then you can grow your geometry from the circles. But we'll do it in the next exercise. So far, thanks for your attention and good luck with that.